Here's what's new in Ray Dynamic Color version 2. If you're new to Ray, skip this video and watch the tutorials instead. The tool is now responsive to your window size and takes up less space than the previous version. For instance, you can now collapse parts of the UI to save even more screen space. And the text buttons are now replaced by icons. In the settings, you can find the meaning of the icons and you can look up tutorials and ask for support if there's anything wrong. In the new version, swatch numbers are hidden so you can see the complete color palette clearly. But you can also turn on the swatch numbers here if you really need them. However, you may notice that there is a bug in After Effects where the buttons get stuck on hover. However, this does not affect the functionality. This is the biggest new feature in Ray. As you may know, Ray applies a number to a color property and then that number is connected to a color in the color palette using an expression link. The expression links are great for changing colors all at once, but it makes the colors in your project rely on the color palette composition. And some of us just simply don't like having expressions in our projects. So in this version, you have the option to turn off the expression links so that Ray can also function as a normal color palette, giving you a normal color value. Let me give you an example. I have this project here without any expression links. And I turned off the expression links in Ray so that I can color without links. But now I want to change this yellow color to orange. And to do that, I turn on the expression links for a moment. Then I find a yellow color and create a color palette out of it. So now I'm going to select a range of layers or the entire comp and press on the link button. This will find all the other yellow colors in the comp and link them to this new color palette. So now that all the colors are linked, I can click on the edit button and in the effects panel, I can change the yellow to orange. Then I go back to my main comp and find that all the colors are now changed. Then I can just simply select the comp again and unlink all the colors to remove the expression links. Now I can turn off the expression links again and switch back to my main color palette. In addition, I can also add the newly created orange color to my main color palette, holding shift and then pressing the link button. And if you're coloring without links, you also have the option to rearrange the colors however you like, because there's no connection between the colors in your project and the colors in your color palette. The scan feature is now integrated with the plus button. To create a color palette, just select a bunch of layers, comps, or color properties and press the plus button to create a color palette out of them. If you don't have any colors selected, you will get the default color palette. You can also hold the option key while you press the plus button and this will give you a default palette no matter what you have selected. Color palettes now have unique names based on your project name and it's now possible to rename color palettes without breaking the expression links. This is great for collaborating with others, so you never run into the situation that you have two different color palettes with the same name. Unfortunately, Adobe has stopped the support for ASE files because they want you to share assets with Creative Cloud. Because of this, I removed the import and export ASE function. But don't worry, there are more reliable and better ways to share color palettes anyways. You can reduce the project and save an After Effects file with just that color palette comp in it. Or you can use an FFX file to store the color controls as a preset. Just select all the color controls on the first layer in your color palette comp and then save them as an FFX file to your presets library. Now the file will show up in the effects panel. The fastest way to get your colors from Illustrator into After Effects is to just convert the illustrator file to shapes. You can do this by using the create shapes from vector layer function and then create a color palette out of that new shape layer. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this new version of Raid in the